Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, day two of Cross Lines, uh, the Nerds of Color Hard Knock Life coming live. Uh, my special guest today is artist Robin Ha. Say hi to everybody, Robin. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Come join our talk. Robin is a, is a local, locally based artist, formerly uh, Brooklyn based, but now you're in the DC area. Yeah. Uh, you are best known for your cooking comics, and I want to talk to you about that. But first, before we do, can you talk about how you became an artist? Like, what prompted you to discover drawing and wanting to be a, a, a comic artist at that? Okay, that's easy. Um, I think when I was around six years old, uh, my mom started to sh share her favorite comics with me because uh, I was just starting to read the alphabet and the best way to like get me into reading, I guess, was through comics and she was very right about that. So I started reading all this uh, Korean and Japanese manga and manhwa and they're just full of exciting adventures and like really pretty characters and it just totally hooked me so when i was little like i just couldn't think of anything more exciting to do than draw and read comics all you know all the time so that's how i started you've been drawing since you were six years old yes how, how do you still have any of your drawings from back then? Yeah, some of them. You should put an art book out. I should. I mean, they're hilarious. They, I mean, I think they're pretty good for six years old. It's never like anything extraordinary. You know, I wasn't like a proud, you know, like a genius at drawing, but I think I just really love drawing. Specific comic or manga, manhwa that you remember from that period that was like, this is the... Oh, yeah. So my favorite comic, uh, Korean comic artist is Shin Il-suk. I think some of her comics has, has been uh, translated into English. Um, and my very favorite comic of her is called Four Daughters of Armian. It's basically set in like 500 BC in like a Middle East, like Persian Empire time. And it's about these uh, four sisters who have like a very different destiny. And it's very grandiose and it has some mythical characters. and they kind of intertwine with the Persian uh, war and I just thought that it was the coolest thing and I always research all about it and I mean that's the great thing about comics it's like it just gets kids into things that they would never dream about getting into like as a six-year-old like what do I know about Persian Empire you know <laughs> But they got me interested in it, you know? And it got you to read, because that was original, oh, yeah. that was the original intent, was to Definitely. read. So, um, as a, so you said from six years old you wanted to be an artist. Mm -hmm. What steps did you take, like when you, when you first decided, I'm going to be a professional artist, how did you, how did you make that decision? I mean, um, after you were six years old, of course, yeah. like when you were a little bit older. Yeah, I mean, I guess the most straightforward way to get there, I thought, was going to college and study art, right? Nobody really told, you know, nobody really knows, even professional artists don't really know how to be a professional artist. It's very loose uh, profession. It's not like becoming a doctor or a lawyer, you know? So, I mean, I just studied hard and I prepared my portfolio and I sent it to all these art colleges that I thought was, you know, had good programs to teach me the foundation of art. And I got into a good college, uh, RISD, which is the Rhode Island School of Design. And I just studied and draw everything I could. And after I graduated, I was kind of lost. I mean, I feel like most college students, when they graduate, they face this dark void yeah. where like everything that they did has come to an end and they just have to figure out everything on their own. Now yeah, now what? And yeah, it was very difficult. Um, the first year or so, I just tried applying to all different jobs, and I got rejection letter after rejection letter, and I just thought that, hey, you know, what the hell, I'm just going to pack up my bag and move to New York. That's all the great jobs are, so I moved to New York without having anything lined up. But yeah, so I mean, because your art, prof if anyone ever, your website is, what's your website? My website is... Um, Robin, R-O-B-I-N, dot Megaten, M-E-G-A-T-E-N, dot net. If anyone goes to your website, they'll see that it's not just comic art. You do a lot of different yeah. styles. Like, what, what, was that just your experience in school that you decided to expand beyond just doing, like, comics? Yeah, I mean, it's extremely difficult to make a living doing comics. Like, 
every cartoonist would agree with that, unless you're like Stan Lee and Jim Lee, you know? <laughs> so as I got out of school, I just need to find something that I could, you know, use my skill as an art artist. So I basically applied to all kinds of jobs, and the first thing I that landed to me was uh, doing textile design. So I still do textile design, and I really enjoy doing that. It's basically making pretty flowers and arranging them in pattern, you know, it's very easy. I mean, at least to me, I find it very easy and fun to do. Um, yeah, so that's why my uh, website has many different sections. <laughs> okay, we are back uh, more with uh, Robin Ha talking about her work as an artist, and I wanted to focus a little bit more now on your comics work, because eventually, you know, you, you, you've done all these other, like, jobs, but you started getting some work doing comics, indie comics, but as, and some, some published work, too. Can you talk about how you broke into, like, the comics industry and, and, and your, your path through that industry? Right. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people who want to become a cartoonist really want to know how this happens. Yeah. What's the trick? And I really can't tell you there isn't any trick to it. It's just like you just have to keep on making it. And actually, I think it's very important that you set up some kind of network. It's all the jobs I got were through people that I knew. Like, my first gig as a Marvel uh, artist and anchor was through um, meeting um, Michael, who, is, who was my editor at the time. I just met him through uh, going to a convention. Like, I was tabling at a convention, and then he came to see everybody, other people that he knew, and then he just like found my work and he really liked it. So that's how I got the first gig doing a Fantastic Four a short story in Marvel. And Natalie, um, that, through Natalie I uh, got a little short story in the second volume of the um, Secret Identity. Which is available in the reading lounge. Right. <laughs> and Natalie, I uh, got to know her through being in this uh, building full of other artists. I shared a studio with five other cartoonists in this uh, warehouse building in Gowanus, Brooklyn. And through them, I got to meet tons of other artists and people who are already interested in comics. So this is, I really think that no matter what you're doing, either it's comics or music or filmmaking, I think you need to build up your friendship with people that you like and who you admire their work and also really be just putting yourself out there. You gotta go to all the conventions and just like make all the artwork even if nobody cares, you think nobody cares or nobody's gonna look at it. Just you have to have something to show people when you're at these conventions, you know? So that's I think... It's networking. It's basically. networking, yeah, net definitely. Do you feel like, I mean, when you started doing this, I mean, of course, the internet already existed, but like I don't think social media was what it is now. Right. Do you feel like the advent of like Tumblr and Twitter and Instagram has made it a little bit easier to get your work out? Definitely. I mean, it has like a good and a bad side, like anything, right? So it makes you it extremely easy for you to share your work with like millions of people out there. But at the same at the same time, there's so much content out there that it'll be very rare for somebody to actually have time to look at your work. A I, lot of noise. A lot of noise. And I, I follow a whole lot of uh, artists on Instagram, and basically I barely spend a second looking at somebody's artwork, no matter how good they are, you know? It's like everybody's just, just bombarded. Swiping, swiping. Right. So it's good and bad, but definitely it has helped me personally to get jobs. Um, my first graphic novel, which is coming out in a couple of months, I got that book deal through having a Tumblr account. I had a Tumblr that I post uh, one Korean recipe comic a week. I did it consistently, and after a few months, I got a line email from an editor who makes cookbooks, and that's how I got my first book deal. So, I mean, it's a lot of noise to fight through, but it does work, and I think that everybody should have a Tumblr or a website or Instagram, for yeah. sure. Well, and, and I definitely want to talk more about your uh, cooking comics, because I think that's the, it's a very, I mean, it's not a unique in the sense that there are a lot of people who do cooking right. comics, but I feel like your approach to it is really interesting. So we're going to take another break and then come back with Robin and talking about uh, Cook Korea, right? Is that mm -hmm. what it's called? Yes. Yeah, all right. Uh, one, one of the things, things I wanted, I wanted to, talk to talk about, about yeah, we've, we've written about, about it on uh, The Nerds of Color, is uh, you had these mini comics called Banchan that you put out a couple years ago, which were, you had alluded to earlier, like Korean recipe comics. What prompted that idea to say, like, I'm going to do comics about, like, cooking my favorite 
meal, like how did that happen? Oh, okay. So uh, my friend Ellen Lindner has an anthology called The Strumpet. So she invites all of her um, female cartoonist friends to make their own original comic that's like short, you know. So like, I think it was the second volume that I was involved in and the theme was the, uh, about taste. So it could be taste about anything. But I did a short comic about how to make one of my favorite Korean dish. And it was, I, you know, that was the, basically the beginning. Like I didn't realize that I would like doing this, but after I finished drawing it, I was like, oh, this is actually really fun. And at the time I was working on something really long and I was getting really stressed out about like not being able to write well. And like, you know, the whole writing side of comics is still very difficult for me. I have to work a lot at it. But doing this really short recipe comment was so different. It was like a breath of fresh air, you know? So I was thinking like, hey, this is fun to make. And also a lot of people around me love Korean food. And they always ask me like, how do you make this and that? So why well, don't I just keep on doing this? You know, this could be a really fun side thing that I can take a break from my like, other work. But then it became your life. And it became life. like a full-time <laughs> job last year, so. so and you, and you said, said the publisher just randomly came across your Tumblr. And yeah. was like, we do cookbooks. They don't typically do graphic novel books. No. Right? They're like a straight-up cookbook publisher. Right. I mean, I think they publish other non-fiction books, but uh, they're most well-known for com uh, For cookbooks, cookbook, but, but not comics. Yeah. And so how did that, how did that, that like, like, were they just like, we like, wanted to do something different? Yeah, I think so. I mean, so my editor, Patrick, he does email me saying like, they, you know, Korean food right now is super hot. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like the, the trendy food. Yeah, yeah it's hot. <laughs> so they wanted to, I mean, there are a whole bunch of other Korean cookbooks coming out that at the same time my book is coming out. So I think they were just looking for some. What makes sense of the Yeah. And then when they saw my uh, Tumblr, they were like, hey, this girl, like this is very, very different. It's gonna definitely stand out from all the other Korean cookbooks coming out. Right, so, right. yeah, that, I think that's why he contacted well, me. I mean, I'm definitely, definitely looking forward to it. When it, it comes out really soon, when does it come yeah, out? Yeah, it's coming out July 5th, and you can buy it anywhere. The book is sold, like, you can go to Amazon, or iTunes, the, you know, you can even download it on Kindle. You can go to a regular bookstore. I recommend you guys to go, actually, to uh, your favorite local bookstore and buy it from there. Yeah, always support independent bookstores. Yes. Uh, so, so what, what makes, makes, is there any difference in doing like a recipe comic versus like a typical like fiction narrative comic? Like is there a big difference? Oh, definitely. What is the biggest difference? I mean, the only thing that's consistent is the part that I'm drawing, right? Well, apart from that, it's writing fiction, especially for me, is very difficult. Because um, yeah, it's, there's so much planning that goes on before you even start drawing. Like people who read manga or anime, like I don't know, like I don't know how they can chop 20, 30 pages a month. You know, like Naruto, like he, this guy drew like 10,000 pages. And I mean, they must have tons of people helping them. But for me, even just getting a script ready for it to make me want to draw without feeling like, oh, I'm screwing things up. That point, getting to that point is so hard. So I spent a lot of time before even I draw anything on writing when I'm doing my other um, non-fiction or fictional work. So um, in recipe comics, basically I don't have to do any of that work, but I have to make sure the recipe works. Right. <laughs> you have to actually cook it. <laughs> exactly. So instead of writing, I'm cooking. This is like the same but in a different way, yeah. you know, the prep work. Well, and I think one of the things that makes comics and like cooking cookbooks kind of similar is that I mean, comics are sequential art, and cookbooks are all about the sequence, right? right. So like, is that does that translate when you're? Oh yeah, I mean, I think cooking comics is the best way to learn cooking. I mean, I'm not just saying this because I made one or I'm a cartoonist. Buy into one. Buy into one. <laughs> but like, you know, like there's so many cooking um, videos out there. There's so many, right? They're really fun to look at, but. It doesn't give you that much detail, like the, how you cook or how it looks like, the right, packaging. Right. And you mean those like tasty videos on Facebook? Yeah, I mean they're fun and it's inspiring, but it doesn't really tell you exactly how to make it. But in comics, you can see the whole sequence in one view, right? When you look at a page, you can see what's going on. You can get a general sense 
of what you need to do to make this recipe at once, right? Which you can get by looking at cookbooks because it's usually all a lot of words and just a finished product. So comics, you can actually see, have a glance of what's going on right away, yeah. right? And then instead of going back and forth on a film to check how many slices of this do I need, you can just like look at which panel. Right. Oh yeah, I need to do that for this ingredient. You know, so it just it's a lot more quicker and intuitive to learn cooking from uh, comic or sequential art form than in cookbook or through film, yeah. in my opinion. No, I mean, I, I, that's, that's one of the reasons I'm really looking forward to. One, because I'm, I'm, I'm not a great cook. cook. I'm, as, as someone who's tried to do something, something from those tasting videos, videos and it's just been a disaster. disaster. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking, looking forward. forward. Not, not that, 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 that I'll probably, probably be as good of a cook as you, but. No, uh, trust me, anybody can make her improve. Yeah. If I did it, anybody can. Well, yeah, I want to talk about that in our next segment. Back when we're done with Robin Hopper, book Cook Korean comes out July 5th. What's the publisher? 10 Speed Press. From 10 Speed Press. So everybody make sure you pre-order and pick it up in July. Um, one, for this last segment, I want to talk about how, you know, this whole project has kind of blended your love of food and your love of art. Like, how can you talk a little bit about that kind of, that process and just being able to express yourself through, you know, because you love to cook, you love food, and right. you also love doing art. You've kind of found a place to do both. Right. Okay, so um, when I was little, I never cooked. I hated cooking and I was afraid of cooking. Um, then when I went to college, I started cooking myself. And then like in the senior year of my college year, I went to Italy to study art. And I was staying with an uh, Italian family who cooked all the time. So my host mother basically took me into her kitchen and showed me how to cook some simple Italian dishes. And that was my first experience actually cooking something. And I just fell in love with it. Like I just, I guess all it takes really is that first try of yeah. anything you want to do. Like just don't be afraid, but you know, you just learn that from experience. So I just got into cooking right away. And since then I've been cooking, like I lived alone in Brooklyn for like 10 years. So a lot of times that um, I wanted to eat Korean food, and in my neighborhood there wasn't any Korean restaurants, so I would just buy uh, ingredients from a local market and just throw in some Korean gochujang or jjimjang and make it my, my own makeshift like Korean food. And the thing about Korean food is that it's super easy, like you cannot mess it up. It's so simple, all you need is a few key condiments basically. And Okay, most of them is either boiled in one pot or sauteed, you know? So it's just a very easy way to get into cooking. It's not fussy at all. Um, and I guess, like, I, I guess we just talked about how I started making a uh, recipe comic. So cooking for me is like what I do when I'm stuck in art. So it's the same creative energy, right? The creativity is just constant. but Art, I do it for a living, and sometimes it can get really stressful. Right, right. So when I'm stuck with like writing plot or like some panel just always turn out bad, and I just can't seem to figure out how to make it work, then rather than just staring at the same panel for hours on end and feeling depressed, I take a break. I go to the kitchen. I fix my myself a good meal, right. and first of all, you're fixing something to nourish your body. Right. So. You know, you're feeding delicious feed food to yourself, which is good. And at the same time, making food makes you relax. It's like a meditation. So I think cooking is a great way to kind of take yourself out of the worries of future, past, and just put you in the present. And also, I mean, I feel like because you're doing a book specifically about Korean food, it's also a cultural expression. Right. Too, right? Yeah, I mean, my mom cooked food for me ever since I was little, every single day. She just never showed it to me. She fed me magically. Well. Yeah, appeared. just magically like, appeared. I'm like, whoa. I mean, that's one of the reasons like, I thought it was really hard because I never really paid attention to what she was doing. But the food, when she finished making it, it just looked awesome. And it's like very, like, it looks complicated. And the taste is pretty com complex too. So I just never thought it's something I could do. But it really is really easy to make. 
Yeah. Well, and, and your book will hopefully show people how right. easy it is. Yeah, like my book, if nothing else, I wanted to open people up to trying to make Korean food. That's all I'm trying to do. Yeah. Like, it's it's really like it, it took me 20 years to get over my fear of cooking, and all it took was somebody to just show me how to do it. Right. Somebody to give me a chance, and this is what you need to do. And it really is not hard at all. Well, I'm, I, I've said many times I'm very excited and I can't wait to get the book in July. Uh, so, if, how can people find you on the internet? You already gave your website. Are you on Twitter, Instagram, right. So, I, Twitter and Instagram is both Robin Ha Art. So, R-O-B-I-N-H-A Art, A-R-T. Um, and my Tumblr, you can actually uh, see a dozens and more uh, recipes and also other stuff about the cookbook on pantancomic.tumblr.com Alright, so I want to thank you Robin for coming to Crosslines and being a part of the Hard Knock Life live <laughs> and uh, thanks again and uh, thank, thank you for watching and listening we'll Thank you